design is Jenny here, Creative Director of Colouring Heaven. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to colour sky using this design by Ukrainian paleo artist Sergei Krasovsky from the brilliant Colouring Heaven collection issue 45 Dinosaurs, which is on sale now. Before we get started, a quick science lesson. Light is made up from a spectrum of colours that come together to create white light. So why is the sky blue? Well, blue light is scattered 10 times more easily than red, so the sky appears blue when viewed from the Earth. This is called Rayleigh scattering. When there are larger particles in the air due to water vapour or pollution, this allows more colours of light to scatter, generally creating white. This is called me scattering. This is why the sky is darker at the top and lighter towards the horizon. This photo from royalty-free library unsplash.com demonstrates this perfectly. Clouds are water vapour and are shaped by the air temperature. High up and the droplets freeze into wispy strands. Lower down is generally not so cold so the droplets collect to make wet fluffy clouds and the wind pushes and pulls the clouds in different shapes. On this diagram you can see the different shapes of cloud and where they appear in the sky. I think it helps to have a general understanding of these principles so you can create your skies to look most realistic. So now that that's covered, on to the colouring! To start off, I'm going to show you how to create a cloudless sky using a gentle gradient. This is all about getting as smooth a transition as possible and an effective and super quick way of doing this is with chalk pastels. I'm going to use these pan pastels which are very popular for colouring because they're intended for the job. Um, and you can also use um, other chalk pastels. Make sure it's chalk pastels rather than oil pastels. These are some I also have from um, Brownie and they are, they look like that. Um, but for these ones, for backgrounds and where you're trying to get a smooth transition, I find it easier to use the pan pastels. Um, we're going to be looking at a gradient and I'm just going to do a plain blue here so you can see um, a very smooth transition from a darker blue to a, a whitey or lighter blue just at the horizon here. So that's what I'm going to try and emulate. Um, and because of that, I've selected this blue colour, ultramarine blue in the pan pastel range. And for this, I'm going to use a good old cotton wool pad. Um, you can use these smudgy little pads as well. Um, but they tend to take on the shape of the pad and because we're wanting no shapes and a really gentle transition I'm just going to use a cotton wool pad so um, start off just by applying some of the pigment onto here and start at the point you want your lightest uh, sorry the exact opposite of that start at the point you want to be darkest because obviously you've got the most pigment on there so that's where you want to start and just give it a rub If you use circular motion like this, it avoids getting any lines or streaks in it and keeps it as smooth as possible. And this design obviously has bits in the sky which I'm just going to ignore for these purposes. And don't worry about it going over your actual content of your design, in this case this dinosaur's head, because I'll show you a technique to get rid of that shortly, but I'm just going to put a quite smooth coating, obviously don't go crazy over the dinosaur, but you want to get it right up to the edges, so just work like that. And then from about here down I'm going to start lightening it off a bit, so I'm not going to add any more and I'm just going to keep rubbing in gentle circles. I'm bringing that chalk down to the skyline. I am going to add a bit more now because you can't get enough on there. So again, you can vary your pressure to help the gradient be as smooth a transition as possible. Gosh, no, I tried to do this. My first, um, one of my first colouring pieces was a beautiful piece by Konoko Aguse and it was some flowers with and I wanted, to, and I'd done all the flowers, and I wanted to create a transition background exactly like this, and I did it in colouring pencils. And my goodness, 
it took me such a long time and really trying to get such a lovely smooth transition was a lot of work and when I discovered these pastels I was over the moon because <laughs> I love the the smoothness of the transition that it gives you but look how quick that is I mean even if it's not amazingly smooth then you can go in back on top here and you can rub back a bit because that's the thing with chalk it just comes back off until you fix it so a little bit blobby maybe but I think that's a that's a fine transition to be honest like I say you can rub back in and if there are areas where you want to lift a bit more you can use a putty rubber just dab to lift off some of that chalk <clears throat> and then go back in with a clean bit of cotton pad but generally the cotton pad does the trick there super quick and easy and a nice gentle transition I think so once that's done obviously you've got that going all over the um, actual dinosaur itself so for that I'm going to use um, my Derwent electric eraser and I'm just going to carefully so that my hand doesn't go over the chalk because this can be a very messy process if you if you start rubbing your hands on everything um, and for that reason I have um, a towel just here to wipe my hands on to wipe the, the backs of my hand that touches on the paper because otherwise it transfers to the rest of your design, your desk, your other things. I've got it all over my keyboard. <laughs> um, so yeah, try and keep tidy people. Now I'm just taking this, um, you have got different thicknesses of um, eraser on certain um, ones of these. So I, I've just got the one that I've got it set on and just rub over to the edges of the design. If you've got quite an intricate piece, then you can use your a smaller setting or uh, just a sharp piece on a um, one of the plastic erasers they're quite good because if you want a sharp point and you've rubbed one off you can just cut the, the eraser to make a nice sharp point and this just gets rid of all the chalk so that you're back to a clean canvas for when you actually colour the dinosaur or the other item that you're doing in this case one of these lovely dinosaurs from the dinosaur collection And now something I don't have with me here, which I should have thought of before, is um, my drafting brush to get rid of all the rubbings. So again, just use a clean, a clean cotton pad to brush all those away. But you'll see that's really bringing that up nicely now. Um, I'll just get rid of those last bits. So once this bit's done, you can then fix your pastels before you start working because as you can see even just giving it a very gentle blow and a brush with that clean pad it still just lifts and moves around all over the place but be quite um like i say just as tidy as you can be sorry talking over that noise there we go now you can use um artists fixative um, or if you've got some knocking about, like I have, I don't know, good old hairspray. Um, so I'm going to take this outside, obviously, because it's a bit smelly and I don't want to be breathing it in. I'll take this outside and give it a fix. And there we have it. One fixed sky background done in a matter of minutes. Um, when applying the fixative, um, what you want to watch out for is making the page too wet. Um, it's much better to hold the can about 10 inches away and give it a fine coating, leave it for a moment um, and then come back in and do a couple of couple of layers of fixing maybe. Um, let me just clean my hands off and then I'll show you. There, my finger's not massively clean anyway but if I now rub my finger over it you can see it's not pushing the chalk around and I'm not getting any on my finger. So you still want to be careful when you're when you're colouring the, the bits there and maybe use a glove or 
put a sheet of paper on top to protect it um, is probably the best thing to do. Um, and there you go. One background ready to colour. So this time we have the same design and we're going to look at um, adding some clouds. Now this is another um, image that I found on royalty free image website called unsplash.com and this shows some different types of clouds as described in the um, diagram earlier. So you've got some little bit dotty liney bits through here, some nice lines here and the little wet fluffy ones that we talked about at the bottom. So basically what we want to do is a gradient in the background. Again you can see that we go from a very dark blue up here to near a white or very pale blue on the horizon. So um, I think what we'll do is work a, work a gradient again but maybe remove some of the areas like not colour in so dark so it's not such a smooth transition and just leave a bit of an indication of where we, we can put these clouds. Now you'll notice on a nice bright blue summer's day like this and the sky is high in the, uh, the sun is high in the sky you get the lightest part of the cloud on the top here and then you get a little bit of a grey shadow along the bottom so that's something to bear in mind that can indicate the different type of day um, because obviously it's sunset when the sun is at the bottom that actually reverses and you get the highlights on the bottom and the shadows on the top which um, so you can create different effects just by changing where the highlight is in the cloud. So this is the kind of thing we're going to aim for. Again, we'll start with the, the blue, ultra, ultramarine blue, pan pastel. And I'm going to start with clean pad. And start in the same way, just applying the chalk, circular motions at the top here. Now I'm not going to worry about where the these little ones here are because we're going to add these in afterwards but I will maybe leave a lighter area here and some here and like I say just indicate roughly where some clouds are going to go. I'm just going to use these lines in the design here as, a, as an indicator of the lighter area. So I am putting the blue on, I'm just doing it very, very gently and then working that down a little bit darker underneath and then doing the gradient back down to the bottom. It's quite hard when you're using this pad to make any meaningful cloud shapes, but um, what I'm going to do next is swap to my applicator with the sponge. Now this um, you can get different shapes and size pads for and you can get just the sponges on your own in this pan pastel set that I bought. As you can see there's a little like a little makeup applicator and some different sponges. These are actually just like foundation sponges. Um, and I'll just show you this one again if you work in circular motions it gives quite a different effect. So this is where we can start being a little bit more accurate and leaving space for imagined clouds. Now the picture I've shown you is just for inspiration only, so I'm not going to try and match it exactly. I'm just going to give the effect of the different types of clouds that we've talked about. And we can go back in with a bit more accuracy to define that lighter area. Go right up to the edge of that line to disguise that a little bit. I did toy with the idea of um, whiting out these lines, um, but it gives a hump and a different texture and, it, and the chalk then gets caught on the edges of the ink that's applied. So I think it's best just to leave them out, just to kind of pretend they're not there or work your design around them, like I'm doing a little bit here. As you can see, you can get much more accurate than with the cotton pad, so this is good for putting in a bit of texture. We want the gradation, the, um, the gentle gradient, but we also are able to have a bit more texture in this while we've got clouds, it's not a cloudless sky. And it's about just moving your sponge around quite randomly really. As this is sky, it's a very natural a natural thing. We can have a little bit of texture in here maybe, just the bottoms of some of the other clouds.
And see, even by doing that, we've got quite a nice realistic effect going on already. Okay, so once you're happy with what you've got there, just add a bit more texture in. Okay, so what we want to do now is define those clouds a little bit. So again, I'm going to use my electric eraser. I'm just going to pull the rub up a little bit. Now you might have seen me use this technique before on, on pencils. In fact, doing a background thing, you could do it for like a universe or some kind of sky background. So that technique again. And looking at these pictures, so they've got a really defined edge across the top here. So we're just going to work in some bits across the tops of where we think our clouds are. So just here, I've left shapes in, but I'm going to really define that. And again, the trick is there's not, you know, it's not like cartoon clouds where you've got bubbles across the top. It's really quite random. So just move about in a really organic way. Let the razor take you a little bit. You see already, again, just, just the slightest of brush to get that rubbings off. And can you see that's slightly looking a bit more realistic now? So where I've made those darker marks, I'm just kind of um, mirroring those with a highlight on the top. Another turn on really just random shapes with slightly more horizontal feel to them and trailing off to the edges maybe. That one in the sky here. A bit flabby. Okay, and now what I'm going to use is another household item. An earbud. And then just on these ones here, I'm going to try and keep the sharp top edge, but just smudge that bottom in so it's not such a hard edge. So this is like the transition area of the, the shadow to the highlight of the cloud. So you just want to make that a little bit softer than that hard edge that we've got currently. Keep it hard on the top and then smudge the bottom in a little bit if you can. That's the aim. Just smudge it in to soften that bottom edge. As you pick up chalk onto the pad, you can work into these areas where you've left more, just again to give that a softer transition, but you're actually adding just the slightest bit of chalk to those areas now. Then what we could do is add a little bit of a shadow like we've got in the picture here. Depending on what kind of day you're looking at, if you want it to be really nice and shiny with just little fluffy white clouds, this, these seem to have a little hint of um, thick, thickness and wetness to them. So I'm just going to give it a go and add a black here. And obviously I'm going to go really careful with this because we don't want to go too crazy. Um, what I might do, in fact, is um, add some of the pigment here to the back of another sheet and rub it off until we're just getting the slightest bit of pigment on there and then trying to add that here. And again, you can help define the shapes of the clouds by 
giving them a bit more dimension. Just a little bit of a rain cloud leaning here, We're starting to build up. Nice. And again, I'm tr like I say, trying to get a little bit more th dimension into these slightly bigger ones by working into them to give them the feel of fluffiness and all different shapes rather than just being a, a flat shape. I don't think we need to do that on all of them, but just the bigger ones like that maybe. There. So now I'm going to go in, tidy up um, all the overspill of chalk and give this a fix. there and off to fix. Okay now that's fixed we can start putting the final touches in and what I'm going to do is just work a little bit on top with pencil. Um, you'll feel it feels a little bit different to just walk, working on paper now that we've had a fixative but um, just adding a tiny little bit of detail to the top of these making these clouds look a little bit more fluffy again um, makes all the difference and it's just finishing touch you could leave it like this if you like I think that looks perfectly good but um, I'd like to just work a little bit more in so I've taken a blue which is as close as I can get to um, the ultramarine pan pastel which is helio blue reddish 9201 in Faber Castell polychromos and what I'm going to do is um, as the rubber we used it in random strokes but it still has got little bits to it that I think would be more effective if they were a little bit more random so just add a little bit more roughness to the tops of these clouds and then just blend that out slightly you could do this really roughly quite lightly the whole idea is this is that it's a nice quick easy solution to doing a background and spending days and then just like I say, work that out a little bit helps give a little bit more definition to the tops of the clouds but with a softer fluffier looking edge just obviously here where you've not got the high contrast edge it's just adding a bit of definition but doing it really lightly because otherwise it will show up quite a lot against this lighter blue that it's with in areas like this where we blended it out with the eraser so it's literally just moving the pencil around that quite randomly like we did with the eraser and then you can also if you're very gentle can just work in a little bit of Shading just very gently there. Could also work some darker areas, so really some like strands. And again, just random squiggly movements. carry on with this if you wanted working in more and more texture but like I say the idea is that this is a quick technique and I think that looks really quite nice and realistic um, so I'm happy with that and I hope you think that that's a fun and easy quick way to do it there's different gradient there with clouds one more thing I'd just like to show you, so you can use the same technique. Um, here's one I did earlier with the same thing, using 
the same technique but using this picture for reference so this one is either sunrise or sunset and you can tell that because the light source is at the bottom and the highlights are on the bottoms of the clouds and you've got this lovely purpley to pinky orangey at the bottom here which I quite like for a really dramatic look which I thought suit these prehistoric pictures quite nicely so again worked um, worked it all over pan pastel which is this one yellow ochre I think yep yellow ochre worked that gently all over then added a purple a violet rather into the areas as you can see then I worked at, uh, another colour with red permanent red into the top side of the clouds um, so that's where we want to start the shadow coming and the top side um, and then I actually did work some black into these bits as well fixed it, removed all the excess, fixed it and then went back in with pencils and just did exactly like I've just shown you, just gave this bottom edge in this case rather than top edge more contrast but a softer fluffiness to the look of the clouds and I think the way the, the yellow and the, the red sitting on top of that yellow with the white highlights there going into the purple and black looks really effective and very dramatic. Well I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you'd like to colour this design, Colouring Heaven Collection issue 45 Dinosaurs with these fantastic designs by Ukrainian paleo artist Sergei Krasovsky is available from the Colouring Heaven shop now. Visit shop.colouringheaven.com by following the link in the description below. Please like, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos from Colouring Heaven. Bye!